So uh, the, the title of my talk is uh, Limit Theorems Theorem for Interval Exchange Transformations. <laughs> Uh, so I, uh, I think I, sh I don't need to remind what the interval exchange transformation is, but uh, I want to, to recall what is the limit theorem in this context. So uh, if you have a dynamical system in this setting, say you have the map on, a, on an interval, uh, and uh, this interval is uh, endowed with the Lebesgue measure, which is invariant in this setting. Uh, then you can take any function uh, and consider, uh, so now you uh, look at this as a random variable, so x is chosen randomly with respect to this mu, and so you are interested in this distribution. Uh, and since we have uh, the transformation, it is natural to consider the uh, averages with respect to this map. So we take S n phi of x, which is, well, for, con for convenience, I will not uh, divide by n here, uh, just to make other formulas look nicer. And so we are interested uh, in the distribution of the normalized averages. So we take, say, uh, phi n, which is phi minus average divided by a square root of its variation. So we are interested in what is the distribution what is the limit of this distribution? Uh, for the, uh, 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 in the situation when the, your system is chaotic, say hyperbolic, uh, you have uh, more or less uh, the same central limit theorem as for uh, Bernoulli, uh, as just the Bernoulli process. Uh, but here uh, we have no such simple uh, symptotics. There are no uh, limit for the distribution, but we have more delicate uh, setting, and I will describe what we have. So, uh, uh, the base for this case is a case which, uh, of the continuous system, uh, which is a special flow uh, uh, with uh, this map in the base, which uh, that is the uh, of translation flow. So now we have a flat surface. You can think about it as a bunch of rectangles. And uh, so we have an interval exchange map that maps this interval. So it interchanges these intervals by some way. Say here is 1, 2, and 3. And you have 1. So uh, a point goes uh, goes up with the unit speed, and then when it reaches uh, the top of this interval, it goes uh, to the bottom with respect to this interval exchange map. So you go here, then this point maps uh, well there, then goes back, uh, goes up again, and so on. So this is a uh, translation flow on this flat surface. Indeed, uh, there is a, uh, a method how to, to stitch together the uh, side parts of this rectangle. So now we have uh, we, de uh, we de uh, defined how to glue top uh, boundary to the bottom boundary, but uh, what about the uh, sides? So we ca they can be glued to some nice surface with some singularities, uh, uh, but this is not the topic of my talk. Uh, note that uh, on the same surface you have the, another uh, flow which is a horizontal. So you just go uh, to the right with the unit speed. Uh, 
Then uh, this system uh, obviously also has the uh, invariant measure, which is Lebesgue measure. Uh, uh, and we will assume uh, further than the, the total area of the surface is one. Now uh, we can uh, consider the same averages for this situation. So we take S, well, let's say I T phi, which is an integral, uh, the ergodic integral. And again, we normalize it like that, uh, and we're interested in asymptotics. Uh, the theorem by Bufetov uh, states that uh, there is a limit along some subsequences uh, for uh, note. Uh, so uh, Bufetov theorem uh, works not for all uh, translation flows, for, but for generic ones. I will discuss this a bit later for generic uh, translation flow. Uh, the distribution of this, well, I write phi of t, which is a normalized this guy, uh, has some limit for some subsequence. Uh, and the reason for this uh, is that, uh, so how to describe this limit? Uh, the reason is that uh, when you take, when you take this surface, uh, you have a uh, Teichmuller flow, which is, so we basically shrink uh, the surface in one direction, and stretches in another direction. Uh, and the other thing you can do with this surface uh, is that you can uh, change your uh, section, your base interval. Uh, there is so-called transient induction, uh, which make uh, which can make your interval shorter or longer, and so you can uh, think about uh, this about uh, the set of all uh, translation flows fac factorized by this transient induction, and on this uh, in this factor on this modular spaces here, uh, uh, the Miller flows flow acts. Uh, and uh, so uh, you can now, uh, if you apply a uh, technical flow to your surface, uh, your, uh, ever, uh, your ergodic integral change the time, which is uh, this t. So this t is multiplied or divided by e to the s. So uh, uh, you can uh, think about this not as you make longer and longer interval, but as uh, you take uh, just interval of length one, so you have t equals to one, but you change the surface. And therefore, uh, you can uh, look now uh, what is uh, about, uh, now how to describe what, uh, which, success, which sequences can be taken here. You just take uh, those subsequences uh, such that, uh, logarithm, so have your initial surface, then you apply technical flow, and so it takes such time such that this has some limit. And then along this subsequence you have uh, the asymptotics, so you have tk equals to the e to the sm. So when your, your surface goes to, uh, tends to some fixed surface, you have this asymptotics in distribution. Uh, note also that uh, indeed uh, there is another technical detail is that you should uh, say that phi is not uh, an arbitrary function 
uh, but for phi outside of some uh, subspace of co-dimension one. This is what Buffetto's theorem says. Now uh, we take, so and uh, the limit of this, uh, uh, limit of this, uh, so the limit of this distributions can be also uh, quite explicitly de uh, defined. Uh, you take uh, so-called uh, finitely additive functionals, uh, which is essentially goes like this. So uh, you have uh, the Rosy induction, so we have uh, the following set of matrices. So the heights, uh, so the heights of the intervals. So H are vectors uh, of the length uh, equal to the number of the rectangles. So the heights of the rectangles on the next step are, are some linear combinations on the heights of, on the previous step. And so, uh, uh, obviously, uh, this set of uh, equations, so here n belongs to z, uh, have uh, an n-dimensional set of solutions. Uh, and among these solutions is one uh, which is uh, where all vectors are positive. There are heights of these rectangles. But indeed, uh, you can also take other solutions. Uh, they are not uh, positive, uh, so your vectors have ne some negative components. But nevertheless, uh, if you uh, take any such solution, so we take a set of vectors satisfying this, you can measure uh, any, uh, you can describe another length, so another function to any uh, vertical segment. Take say this segment, it has a length which is A0, uh, so it is first component of H0, if this is a uh, partition uh, defined by H0, um, which is numbered to zero. Uh, and if you have uh, another s segment, you have, you can do like this, so first put some uh, elements of the partition number zero, or maybe even less uh, than have some elements of the second, of the first partition, then of the second, and so on. And you, uh, what you need is uh, to have some, mm -hmm. this uh, set, uh, this series is summable, it is converges to some, uh, to some numbers, uh, so you ha can uh, define your measure uh, for, any, for any segment. And this uh, can be done if you uh, have uh, this n uh, tends as n goes to minus infinity to zero uh, uh, exponentially. Then, uh, with, uh, then you have the, this series convergent, uh, everything is okay. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, what is the basis for this result by Buffetov is that uh, when you look at this integral, is that uh, this integral behaves essentially like this, uh, like this uh, find the additive functional. So I'll write this as phi. Plus, and here is a segment from X to Note that uh, this, uh, this is also written as follows, it's just a definition. So this is a, just the length in this strange sense of this uh, vector plus some uh, plus this error term, which is large of t to the epsilon. And so, uh, when you normalize, you have that this is the most uh, important part, and indeed, uh, when you divide by this uh, variation, uh, 
uh, first you subtract the average, uh, then you divide by the uh, variation. And so, indeed, uh, you, you should consider the most powerful part of this asymptotics. And uh, indeed, uh, when you look at this exponential, uh, uh, about this, uh, all uh, the subspace of all solutions of this equation, which uh, satisfy this uh, condition, then in this uh, uh, setting, you have a, a sequence of subspaces, a flag of subspaces, and uh, so the first subspace is uh, phi one, which is uh, just the length. Uh, the second one is the next uh, in asymptotics, and so on. So. Uh, One and uh, and so on. So uh, indeed, uh, what we have in this uh, in this uh, setting is more or less uh, the this guy, because this one is uh, killed by uh, subtracting average, and uh, the next guys are, have this this lower order. So uh, this distribution is in fact the distribution of this phi two plus of x t, or indeed of x one. For this, so we can say that the limit is the distribution to this, uh, and uh, so what is my result? I try to. Uh, to uh, do almost the same uh, things, but for interval exchange transformations. What are the main troubles here? Uh, so there are two troubles. First of all, uh, there are no, so here uh, you have type Muller flow, which works quite nicely. So if you take the type Muller flow, your average by the time t goes to the average by, uh, by the time t multiplied by e to the s. So it just stretches or shrinks your time uniformly. And if you perform Razi induction in this situation, you have not uh, the uh, average by same time, time million, but for some random time, because uh, the Razi induction yields you not the iterate, but uh, the first return map. And so uh, uh, instead of this, uh, you have more complicated thing, which is uh, uh, sums with various number of Elements uh, and uh, uh, another thing is that uh, have no uh, well. So uh, the Rosy induction is uh, non-invertible, so it uh, needs some more care uh, with respect to that case. Uh, so uh, my theorem is that. Uh, Again, for Eric, uh, the same holds. So, if you take uh, phi and k, uh, the distribution tends to some limit, which is indeed exactly the distribution of phi two plus. So they have the uh, so the set of all its distributions is exactly the same as here, uh, and the only difference is that uh, we first need to to, uh, to describe what uh, n k is. So here we have just the Tecmiller flow, and in that moment this Tecmiller flow go, uh, moves your surf, uh, surface close to this m, and here the situation is a bit more complicated because there are no initial surface. Uh, so here is the setting. Uh, and one more thing I want to discuss before going to proof is that what the word generic in this works uh, states. Uh, indeed, uh, this uh, generic means uh, of the set of measure one uh, by some measure. And this measure should also have genericity for some uh, properties. 
for example, uh, so indeed there are two properties uh, which for this measure. They should, uh, first of all, the unique, or, uniquely ergodic translation flows should be uh, uh, mu generic. And the second property is that uh, when you look at this, uh, at this equation, you can think about it as about a uh, 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 cycle uh, uh, for this system. And so you have uh, to require that this cycle satisfies uh, the conditions of a selected theorem, that the integral of the logarithm of its norm and uh, the logarithm of norm of its inverse should be uh, integrable with respect to this measure. And if this is OK, then uh, for almost all translation flows for almost all m with respect to this measure mu. Uh, okay, this mu is not that mu. Point we have uh, what is written there. So let's say that uh, the set of all uh, this, so let omega or say omega zero be the set of all such translation flows. Uh, such that this holds. Uh, then, uh, indeed, what is written here uh, is that uh, generic IT is a set of all translation flows. Such that uh, there exists uh, the vector H. Uh, such that uh, T with, the, with this roof function, with this, so when you uh, consider the special flow uh, like uh, drawn there, then this belongs to omega zero. This is a new set, so let's say omega zero hat, and we say that indeed for any belongs to this omega zero hat. Uh, and uh, the proof goes. So now I define it in all details. So the proof uh, is, goes as follows. So first of all, as it is written here, you have to, 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 to fix any hates such that the, this flow is, uh, such that for this translation flow, you can apply Buffett of theorem. And uh, if you apply this uh, to the theorem, uh, you can see that, uh, when you define new functions as for, uh, by the following equation, so you take new function, which is uh, phi so. You take any point. Uh, then you define your measure, uh, your function along all this segment to be equal to the value of phi of, uh, of phi on the on its bottom point, uh, divided by the height of this interval uh, of this uh, rectangle. So it, uh, if you uh, do this like that, uh, you can see that uh, the, this average. It, uh, the integral uh, from zero to some time of that. just an ergodic integral, but with the uh, not uh, defined t uh, time to end, uh, uh, and uh, this time can be defined by the following property, which is uh, exactly the same formula, but for function phi, which is identical, equal one. Then you get this. Note that uh, this time does not depend on function. It is indeed the time you need. Well, here is a different one. So if you take any point, uh, you just take this point, and then you integrate or until you go uh, up through n and large rectangle, so this time is 
uh, doesn't depend on phi. So here you have this. And then you can decompose both these uh, formulas uh, by this buffet of approximation lemma, by this composition, and again, the first term is given, uh, the second one is uh, the, uh, the one in question, and uh, the remaining is, uh, is negligible. Uh, and uh, here you have, uh, you need to perform the same trick as uh, when you say, uh, prove the differentiability of the implicit function. You, 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 here you have some equation and uh, you have to prove that uh, indeed that this is n plus something of the order of phi two plus of x n. And this can be done by several steps of estimation, better and better, and finally you get that uh, this tau of n x is n minus something multiplied by this phi two of x n. And then you substitute it here, and then you have that here is two terms. And again, you have that uh, the term, the first term is just the uh, average of phi multiplied by the time, time n, and the second uh, term is phi two. So we have the same asymptotics. Uh, but this is not the end of the game because uh, indeed uh, what you prove if you're just uh, looking at these approximations is that the distribution of, uh, well, of this phi and k uh, tends to the distribution of uh, this phi two plus of one x where x is distributed, say x hat, where x is uniformly on i, on the interval. So you have uniform distribution on the bottom line of this interval. But fortunately, uh, when you, uh, uh, you can uh, first, uh, you can average by some fixed time, say up. So you have not this integral, but the integral of this plus some constant. And this constant should be taken uniformly random on some large interval. In this setting, uh, you have almost, by this first step, you have almost uniform distribution of your step starting point on, uh, on, this, uh, on this flat surface. And so you just, uh, and uh, on the terms of estimate, this first part of the integral is negligible. It's just a constant. And so, uh, combining this to uh, base of estimation, you obtain this result. This has a limit. Thank you. <laughs>